The Finland Saga. The Vikings' discovery of America. The evidence is clear that the Vikings discovered America before Columbus did. We even have two medieval accounts of their travels, which occurred around 1000 AD and which together are known as the Finland Sagas. These manuscripts are from Iceland and are called the Saga of Eric the Red and the Greenland Saga. Eric the Red became the first to set foot on Greenland and his son Leif Eriksson became the first European to set foot on America, which they named Finland or Land of Wine. There they created the first European settlement in America and even had deadly conflicts with Native Americans. Since the 1960s we also have direct evidence that the Vikings indeed settled in America, on the Canadian coast to be specific. In this lecture we will examine this evidence and tell the story of their adventures. Hey, good to see you. This is Stefan, author of In Search of the Sublime. On this World History Channel we'll trace humanity's relentless pursuit of scientific truth, moral excellence and enlightenment. We'll meet anyone from Mesopotamian astronomers and Indian yogis to Greek philosophers and enlightenment scientists. And you'll meet them firsthand using primary sources, giving you valuable insights that transcend the surface level understanding you get on other channels. Go check it out for yourself. Let's start. Let's start by peeking through these books, which are now in the University Library of Iceland. Here we see a 14th century manuscript, which includes the saga of Eric the Red. And here another one from the 15th century. And here on these beautiful pages we see the Greenland saga, also from the 14th century. The Vikings were Europe's greatest sailors. Since they could sail in open waters without land in sight, they could attack without warning. Starting around 800 AD, they conducted large-scale raids on much of the European coast and even managed to take over parts of England and France. And here we see a beautifully preserved Viking ship from around 800 AD, the so-called Oseberg ship. And here we see William the Conqueror on his dragon ship, on his way to conquer England in the 11th century. In time, the Vikings raided about the entire European coast and they even settled in Italy, Russia, Iceland, Greenland, and finally Canada. In green here we see the areas where raids are documented, and the other colors show their settlements. Now let's examine the evidence of Viking settlement in Canada. In the 1960s a Viking settlement was discovered in Newfoundland, Canada. The site is now known as Lanzo Meadows. The types of houses found at this site are similar to those found in Iceland and Greenland, suggesting they were indeed built by the Vikings. And several artifacts from the site are also associated with the Vikings, including a bronze pin used to fasten cloaks and also a stone oil lamp. There isn't much left of the actual houses, but this is a reconstruction based on the evidence. We now turn to the Vikings' own wild account of their travels, the so-called Vinland Sagas. The account consists of two texts which were written in 14th century Iceland and describe a number of trips to America that occurred around 1000 AD. Let's first discuss the story of Eric the Red. In the saga of Eric the Red, we read of a man named Thorvald who moved to Iceland with his son Eric the Red. We read, there was a man named Thorvald, the son of Asvald Ulfsen, son of Oxstrorir. His son was named Eric the Red. Father and son left Jaren in Norway and sailed to Iceland because they had been involved in slayings. That is to say, they were murderers. Once in Iceland, Eric couldn't stop murdering. He killed two more people and was then outlawed from Iceland as well. With nowhere else to go, quote, Eric said he intended to seek out that land that a man named Gunnbjorn had seen when he was driven off course. He referred here to Gunnbjorn Ulfsen, who was the first European to sight Greenland, although he had not gone ashore there. Eric the Red became the first to settle on Greenland, where he started a community that would last for more than four centuries. He also coined the name Greenland, quote, 
As he said, people would be attracted there if it had a favorable name, even though in reality the land was covered by huge glaciers. Now we turn to the saga of the Greenlanders. In the saga of the Greenlanders, we are introduced to Bjarni Herjolfsson, who sailed to Greenland to spend the winter with his father. Yet his journey did not go as expected. We read, Our journey will be thought an ill-considered one, since none of us had sailed the Greenland Sea. Despite this, they set sail. Land had disappeared below the horizon, and for many days they did not know where they were sailing. Eventually, Bjarni found land, but he soon concluded that it wasn't Greenland. Quote, since there are said to be very large glaciers in Greenland. His crew members then wanted to go ashore to explore the land, but Bjarni concluded that there was no need, since they had no shortages. Twice more they found unknown land, until finally at the fourth time, they reached their destination, Greenland. Back in Greenland, when Bjarni told the story, the other settlers on the island could not understand why Bjarni hadn't been bothered to explore the new land. We read, Bjarni told of his voyage, during which he had sighted various lands, and many people thought of him short on curiosity, since he had nothing to tell of these lands, and he was criticized somewhat for this. And then we read, there was now much talk of looking for new lands. Life Eriksson, meaning life the son of Eric, was especially interested. We read, life sought out Bjarni and purchased his ship, he hired a crew numbering 35 men altogether. Leif hoped his father would lead the expedition, but when Eric injured his foot on his way to the ship, he concluded, I'm not intended to find any other land than the one where we live now, so Eric stayed home. In 1001 AD, Leif set sail and became the first European to set foot on America. We read in this old text, As far as this land is concerned, it can't be said of us as of Bjarni that we did not set foot on shore. Their curiosity to see the land was so great that they could not be bothered to wait for the tide to come in and float their stranded ship, and they ran aground. There was no lack of salmon there, we read, and this salmon was larger than they had ever seen before. And the temperature never dropped below freezing, and the day and nights were much more equal in length than in Greenland or Iceland. The company spent the winter at this location, and they built large houses. When exploring land, one of the men found grapes. We then read, Life named the land for its natural features, and called it Finland, the land of wine. The earliest mention of Finland, by the way, in the historical record, is from 1073, by a German cleric named Adam von Bremen. He wrote, The Danish king Sven Estritsson also told me of another island discovered by many in that ocean. It is called Vinland, because vines grow there on their own accord, producing the most excellent wine. That unsown crops abound there, we have ascertained, not from fabulous conjecture, but from the reliable reports of the Danes. What a marvelous quote in this 11th century document. After the winter, life returned to Greenland. Back home, quote, there was a great discussion of Leif's Finland journey, and his brother Thorvald felt that they had not explored enough of the land. Leif responded, you go to Finland, brother, and take my ship as you wish. Once in America, Thorvald had the first encounter with Native Americans, whom they called Skralings. They saw, quote, three hide-covered boats with three men under each of them. They divided their forces and managed to capture all of them except one. They killed the other eight. So this was definitely not a peaceful encounter. At a later point, a vast number of these Native American boats came for them. The natives shot at them with their arrows, and Thorvald became one of their casualties. Quote, An arrow flew between the edge of the ship and the shield into my armpit. Here is the arrow, and this is the wound that will cause my death. Thorvald was then buried in America, in a spot of his own choosing, while the rest of the company returned to Greenland. Hearing the news, Thorstein Eriksson, another brother of life, planned yet another trip to America, the third one, to retrieve his brother's body. However, sickness prevented him from going. 
When Thornstein died, his wife Gudrid remarried to a man named Thorfinn, and they did make that third journey. And there in America, they gave birth to a son named Snorri, the first European to be born in America. After a while, they too became aware of natives. At first, they engaged in friendly trade, but when one native tried to steal their weapons, they killed him, and a larger clash soon followed. We read, they fought, and a large number of the natives were killed. Finally, Leif's sister, Freydis Eriksdottir, or daughter of Eric, also made the crossing, the fourth crossing. Once there, she got into arguments with other settlers, and even got several of them killed. And thus unfolded the saga of the Greenlanders. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned a lot. If you want to know more about this topic, the Vikings, or any other topic from world history, read my book In Search of the Sublime. You can buy it on Amazon, or you can read it for free on worldhistorybook.com. See you next time.